Vettel is setting purple sectors and he's just improved massively and Kimi Raikkonen has taken second place away from Lewis Hamilton. It's an all Ferrari front row, Hamilton third, Verstappen fourth, Alonso fifth. The 2017 South African Grand Prix is underway. Magnussen is now meeting the sponsor objective, he's up into ninth place. I have to say Magnussen is doing rather well and Grosjean's doing okay for the time being. 15th place Roman Grosjean is now in. Both of our drivers making lots of overtaking moves on the offensive. And certainly, he was certainly in contention for some points. Magnussen, he was looking very racy at the start, but now with just a few laps left to go, he's in 13th place. Yeah, Magnussen, he's got at least 10th place wrapped up. Grosjean is now in 16th. And Sebastian Vessel has just won the South African Grand Prix with Hamilton in second. Raikkonen, 30 seconds down on his teammate in third place. And Magnussen, please, no, please, no. Right then guys, it's PSL here, and I'm here for part 7 in my Equal Cars Formula 1 Championship here on Motorsport Manager. And we're just below the halfway mark of the season, and it's the Canadian Grand Prix around Vancouver. And look at it, it's meant to be wet in practice, dry in qualifying, but most importantly, a wet race. And the last time we had a wet race was around Sydney, and look at that, Grosjean took 2nd, Magnussen ninth. Sure, the race was balmy. Wasn't it from memory Valtteri Bottas was... No. Okay, no, I was correct. I thought Bottas was 12th, but the point still stands is that Bottas was the best of the drivers that messed up the strategy. Look, Bottas... Oh, this scroll wheel. I always forget that the scrolling hardly moves it, but... Uh, Bottas, Stroll, Hamilton, Perez, Ricardo, Massa, Verstappen and Vettel. All drivers who completely messed up their strategy. To be fair, Bottas was only two seconds behind Palmer come the end. Yeah, Palmer didn't do that well at all, but it was certainly an interesting race, and sure, second place was largely gifted to us, but even without that, we were certainly in contention for scoring some points. What are the dry tie compounds? Ah, much like at the previous Grand Prix, Ultra Soft, Super Soft, Soft. Good, that's exactly what I want. Yeah, that's pretty much exactly what I want, because I quite liked... Um, those tie compounds for the South African Grand Prix it meant we didn't have to worry as much about tire heating. It was less of an issue to be honest, but I think that is everything. I, you know, I'll check some emails, but I doubt anything interesting will pop up. Well, this is very strange actually because I'm looking at the scouting screen and while well, I was upgrading this scouting facility which has happened and it said that it... Well, I know what the scouting facility does, but somehow I don't know whether this happened because we upgraded our scouting facility or just because, or maybe this is just something our scout was doing in his own time, I don't know, but either way, suddenly we now know the ratings of quite a few IndyCar drivers and a few WEC drivers, look, because I saw, where is he, Robert Kubica, there you go, a man who everybody's been talking about recently, he is a three and a half star driver. That's one of the things I did want to find out, but I don't need to scout him anymore because the game's just straight up told me what his rating is. So, well, we've already got a lot of IndyCar drivers scouted, and I don't really know. I will scout those two, Ryan Hunter, Ray, and Takuma Sato. But I think I might just scout a load of Indy... Oh, uh, sorry, no, uh, Formula E drivers after this because, well, firstly, because I know them better, and secondly, we don't know... Now, again, we just know the Grassies and Abs rating, which is weird because I haven't scouted them. So, I, I, again, I don't know whether that's because we did upgrade the scouting facility or whether our chief scout has just done this, but we know the ability of pretty much every F1 driver, every race F1 driver, apart from Kvyat, and look at it, Hamilton, Vettel, Alonso are the top three drivers from Bottas. That's a... I don't know what the term is. That's got to be like a regen, surely, like a... sort of like a FIFA career mode regen, because... Yeah, must be. But there's no way that she's the fourth best driver on the planet and I've never heard of her. Yeah. And isn't even signed of a team. Yeah, it must be. Because I think when you upgrade the scouting facility, I think it brings in a whole new load of hidden drivers. Which I think is what's happened there. And they're already... They've been instant... And she's been instantly scouted, which is what I don't get. But anyway, and there's Bottas, Raikkonen, Ricardo. Andre Lotterer, though, is the highest rated real driver... 
that isn't in Formula 1. Right, hang on, that's weird. No, that's really weird. I'm sorry, Manisha, but you've tipped it over the edge. High merit payments. That's been rejected, but I'm pretty certain one of the rules I changed, it's, in, it's inconsequential for a one-season series. I'm pretty certain the current rule is it's equality focused merit payments. Yes, it's equality focused merit payments, yet, despite that, despite that, was it? Maurizio Riva Bene didn't want high merit payments, Christian Horner didn't. But then Manisha Kaltenborn did. That's the thing that I really don't get. Is Manisha Kaltenborn would rather the top teams get paid more and the bottom teams get paid less. Well, I know she's not at Sauber anymore, but... But, um... Yeah, that was weird. I mean, it, I just don't get it. That's, um... Even... It's, I mean, sure... I mean, at some point you've got to expect a game to not be accurate to real life, but... The game still acknowledges that Sauber is one of the worst teams, yet, in fact, the worst Formula 1 team, but still, Manisha Kaltenborn would rather have high merit payments. I don't understand that. Why? I just don't see why it would be beneficial to her in any way. But yes, there's only one day left to go, so nothing can possibly happen. So yes, it's on to the Canadian Grand Prix in Vancouver. So here we are now with the practice session around Canada coming to an end now. And as you can see, it did rain towards the end of practice, started dry and rained towards the end, which is why our two drivers are in last and second to last, because we didn't set a flying lap until it was wet. So I don't think we did anyway. So there's no point. I mean, there's even less point now looking at the practice results. I remember the previous race, the one just gone, Julian Palmer was fifth in practice and then nowhere in qualifying and nowhere in the race. So... There you go, I think that validates how utterly useless practice is. No one used the super softs, interestingly. Grosjean, please get a decent qualifying position. You haven't done that in a long time. And no, Grosjean, once again, that's another race now where Grosjean has qualified right towards the back. And when I say right towards the back, I mean second to last. I mean, Grosjean, he's... That's pretty much his qualifying position. That was 19th, 20th. To be fair, he's just moved up to 18th. But Magnussen, once again, putting his teammate to shame in qualifying. Because Magnussen, he didn't do brilliantly. But he still beat Grosjean by over a tenth of a second. Two tenths of a second, pretty much. To make it through into Q2. When Grosjean's out, along with along with the usual. Sainz, Verline, Kvyat, Palmer. The people who normally get eliminated in Q1. Well, Julian Palmer normally doesn't. Normally, Palmer is relatively good in qualifying. In fact, look at the tyres that Palmer was running with towards the end. They were gone. So we still got both Williams. Ericsson is still in it. So we still got some people who normally get eliminated, but usually Williams don't make it through into Q3. Although the one time they did, they took first and third. Well, I say the one time they did, but the one notable time they did. Lance Stroll, though, is out on the super soft tyres, and I think even despite that, Kevin Magnussen is not going to beat Lance Stroll. No, Magnussen, he is not improving on his time. Improved in the final sector, but that's about it. So, Magnussen, he's been eliminated in 12th place. To be honest, though, I'll take that. Oh, no. I would take that if it was a dry race, because we, you know, we'd have free, a free choice of tyre compound and have a decent starting position. It's one of those things people have said in F1 for a long time that starting in 11th is better than starting in 10th, 9th, 8th because of the free tyre uh, compound choice you get. But anyway, yes, 12th, that's okay, I suppose. But Massa, Hulkenberg, Ericsson and Stroll, it's just the same list of drivers that keep getting eliminated. And again, it's, not, it's obviously not due to car performance, it's just purely down to driver skill. Stroll, Massa, Ericsson always get eliminated. Hulkenberg is a shock. Hulkenberg normally makes it through into Q3, but hasn't this time. And neither is his teammate, of course, because Palmer, well, Palmer's already long gone. So here we go. The final 10 minutes of qualifying, and Sergio Perez is already 
on the back foot. He's got a one set of ultra softs. Ocon is going to be qualifying on the super softs. So, bo so both Force Indias, I imagine, will be starting on the fifth row of the grid. No. I wondered why Alonso was 12 seconds off the pace, but it's because there was a bit of rain in the middle of qualifying there. Alonso is going to have another lap now, and it will be dry, so Alonso is going to be able to set a representative time, I would imagine. And Fernando Alonso has taken pole position. There you go, seemingly he's the only person who was able to set a lap when the track was entirely dry. Yeah, I think Vettel, Hamilton, they all... Yeah, I think their laps must have coincided with when the rain started. Wow, that's amazing. Fernando Alonso, due to the changeable conditions, but whatever. Fernando Alonso, he's taken pole position by 3.3 seconds ahead of Sebastian Vettel. This is one of the drawbacks of not having a fully maxed out forecast centre is... Well, is right here is that we don't have a fully maxed out forecast centre. So we can't see the entire weather forecast. It certainly is raining from the start, or pretty much from the start. Yeah, we still kind of have to start on the ultra soft tyres, and we may as well. But I'm going to apply the intermediate tyres perk, because certainly for a large chunk of the race it's going to be wet. It certainly won't be dry tyre conditions, so we may as well fit the intermediate tyre perk. We're all going to have to start... And ultra soft tyres. Well, there's no way you start on anything harder. I think Alonso is allowed to start on a brand new set of tyres. Well, I mean, look, I'm looking at it and the padlock is open, which makes me think that due to the strange conditions in which Q3 happened and Q2, yeah, I think due to that, I think everybody's allowed to choose which tyres they're starting on. But Alonso starting on dries. And then most of the top half runners are starting on intermediates until you get to what, Ericsson? No, until you get to Magnussen, but aside from ourselves. Then you've got Ericsson, Hulkenberg, they're all starting on softs, which is suicide. If you're going to start on dry tyres, you're going to start on ultra softs. But I think... Who knows? This could be a race of two halves, or even just a race that could change completely after two laps once the intermediate tyres come in to effect. Um, I really do not know what to expect at this point, but my money would be on Alonso because he's on the right tyres at the start, but honestly, I don't have a clue what's going to happen. Right then, so it's still dry for the time being as the 2017 Canadian Grand Prix is underway. Kevin Magnussen in 11th place already. He's already overtaken. Has he overtaken an intermediate tyre runner? Well, Massa on the Inters is pretty much in stone dead last already. And Alonso has been overtaken by Vettel. What an absolute disgrace for Fernando Alonso. I don't care if he's in the McLaren. It's the equal Formula 1 Cars Championship. He's been overtaken by Vettel. It's still dry. Yeah, it's still dry. And how is Vettel doing this? Just how on earth is he doing this? How are all the intermediate tyre runners doing this? I don't have a clue. But please, Magnussen, please just overtake some people. You're on the right tyres. I thought we'd be carving our way through the field. Hulkenberg has to be fair, because Hulkenberg is in 4th. Magnussen in 9th, 8th, 7th. But we've got to capitalise right now. This is the time, because in, a, what, a laps time? Two laps time? We're going to be on the intermediate tyres. Of course, we will have slightly fresher tyres with more grip, so we will have a slight pace advantage in that sense, and maybe having tyres which have a couple of laps less wear in them that could play to our hands in terms of strategy at some point, but... Alonso's gone. Alonso is long gone. He's 5.9 seconds ahead of Sebastian Vettel. Vettel, full credit to him, he is still in second on the intermediate tyres when the track's bone dry. Full credit to him. Magnussen, though, he's... Ah, here we go. Here we go. It started raining. Okay. Right, here's where this gets fun. I don't think it's quite intermediate tyre conditions yet. No, but I think next lap it will be. Kevin Magnussen's in second. Kevin Magnussen is in second. Sure, he's 8.5 seconds behind Alonso. Right, yep, it's definitely intermediate tyre conditions now, but that's fine. I think we'll be able to do a lap. We've got, we've got track position. Ah, the safety car's out. Someone's crashed. Julian Palmer. Julian Palmer, thank you. Thank you for crashing. Because that means we shouldn't lose too much track position. No, hopefully not. The safety car's out. 
but Geraldine Palmer cracked under the pressure. To be fair, he was on dry tyres when it's raining, so it was going to be tricky for him, but yeah, he is the first retiree of this race. Here we go, Magnussen coming into the pits, and I think because of the safety car, I don't think... Oh, it's a good pit stop, but I don't think we'll lose too much track position, and Magnussen, he's going to come out, what, in third place? He's come out in third place. Kevin Magnussen is in a genuine third place. Why would you want to pit? You've literally just come out of the pits. And Grosjean has had a pit stop issue. Why do I bother with my pit crew? Oh no, here's where it's going to derail for Fernando Alonso and now also Nico Hülkenberg. Because they caught up to the safety car, which means we're going to catch right up to the back of them. So, Magnussen's in third. Sure, he's only just ahead of Sebastian Vettel, but Vettel's got... Well, he's got a lot less life left on his tyres. And it's going to start drying up at some point. Hopefully... Hopefully... I think it will be the case that Vettel's going to have to pit for a new set of intermediate tyres before the track gets dry. I think we will. I mean, Grosjean's really been screwed over by his pit crew because he's down in 18th. But Magnussen is the guy I'm resting all my hopes on because... Alonso and Hülkenberg, the second the safety car gets out of the way, they're going to have no pace. Magnussen, he's got track position and tyre life on Vettel, on Hamilton, on Ricardo, on Raikkonen, on pretty much everyone. Honestly, Magnussen is in the best position of anyone right now, even in terms of strategy. Yeah, because in terms of strategy, Magnussen, I don't think we'll have to come into the pit before the race ends, but Sebastian Vettel will. So, Magnussen could very easily win this Grand Prix. Oh, and there we go, the safety car has bolted, which means in a few seconds time, Alonso, in theory, will be doing the same thing. But the track is wet, and he's on dry tyres. For the time being, though, he is still leading the Grand Prix, and Fernando Alonso, you could so easily be leading it. You could be in a position like Magnussen, but everybody's using their ERS, because I think everybody has saved up a load of it during that safety car period. Utter chaos is what's going on right now, but Magnussen is still in third. Vettel's in second, I think Hülkenberg, ah, oh, Hülkenberg still is only in fourth. But Vettel has passed Magnussen, but thankfully, Magnussen, he's passed Fernando Alonso, he's up into second place. So, Magnussen is in fifth for the time being. That is still alright, because look at the drivers who's beating him. Hamilton, Verstappen, Ricardo, and Vettel, and we all agree, I think, that those drivers are much better than Magnussen. To be fair, Magnussen should be doing a bit better because of... The entire life he's got. But look, Grosjean is making movements now. Look at him. I knew we should have come in on that lap. It's a shame that Magnussen wasn't able to do it. But Grosjean in ninth place. Is he going to make up any places? He is right with Kevin Magnussen. So, sixth and fifth are our two drivers for the time being. Is that Hülkenberg? Yes, it is. Hülkenberg, who we've lapped, I believe, for the... Either we've lapped him... For the second time, or he unlapped himself and then we've relapped him. Either way, well, I don't know. Hülkenberg, though, he is 103 seconds behind us. So, Hülkenberg, he was. It's just he came to the pits too late. That was what screwed him over. Because he could have been in a brilliant position and then wasn't. But it's going to start raining again very soon. And I love because, I mean, the session length, it was a median length race. But then in these final few races, it's been a short length race. So, you know, it's been, it certainly has made it more frantic, these races, with the with the short length. Because, I mean, if there's going to be changeable conditions, it's just going to dive in and out and in and out. And that's exactly what we've seen. But still, Magnussen is in fourth. The only drivers ahead of him are Lewis Hamilton, Daniel Ricciardo and Sebastian Vettel. It looks like Sebastian Vettel isn't going to be coming into the pits. Hang on, let's slow down this race. Ricardo isn't. Hamilton isn't. Okay. I mean, let's... The thing is, though, is if we do pit, we will... Oh, I don't know now. I mean, we could just play it safe. Keep our drivers out on dry tyres when it's wet and secure. Fourth and sixth. We'll certainly position as close to. In fact, Magnussen sort of has to come into the pits anyway. Because of his tyres. I certainly am going to keep at least one of my drivers out. But I'm... If Magnussen pits, he will be in about... He'll probably be outside of the points. Oh, no. This is tricky. 
Grosjean... Grosjean, I think, will stay out. Definitely. He can secure 6th slash 5th place. Magnussen. How much wet is it going to get? I just don't know. Because I, I don't think Magnussen will be able to recoup the time lost on those intermediate tyres. I don't think the intermediates will be that much quicker. But they could be. They could be. But Magnussen's in a decent place anyway. Is anyone thinking about coming into the pits? Stroll isn't. Kvyat isn't. I kind of want to bring someone into the pits just to see what happens more than anything else. But I really don't want to chuck away some decent points, especially for Kevin Magnussen, who's second to last in the Drivers' Championship. No, Magnussen will stay out. I just think... We can't risk losing fourth place. It might work. It might work coming into the pits, but we just cannot risk losing fourth place. What's that, 12 points? There's too much to lose, but I think... Well, Magnussen, he hasn't really got the tyres left. I don't think he'll be making any overtakes. He's got some spare fuel, which he's able to burn up. Yeah, Grosjean wants the intermediates, but is anyone coming into the pits for the Inters? Because if, if the entire field unanimously agrees not to come into the pits then everyone's in the same position and I don't think anyone has let's have a look right towards the back no no one no one has come into the pits and there you go it could have been an exciting end to the race but no one gambled in fact we maybe we really maybe should have done with Magnussen wasn't it the last race Magnussen his ties got to about 11% of their life left and then went off completely I'm hoping the effect will be less profound because, well, because it is, it's raining, so no one's going quickly. Oh, please, just fourth and sixth would be brilliant. Grosjean's got sick wrapped up, definitely. But Magnussen, I think, for the second race in a row could be passed right towards the end. But, of course, Magnussen, he's still got some errors left. No, it's complete deja vu. No, please, Magnussen. Oh, come on. Just at least get a decent finish, even if it isn't fourth. Just please, just get at least a half-decent finish. Fifth and sixth. Okay, well, Grosjean. Grosjean beaten by his teammate. Magnussen. Thank you. Magnussen in fifth. Well, there you go. Could have been fourth, but hey, it's not the end of the world. Fifth and sixth. In what was an entirely... It, a completely insane race. It's raining, and the entire field has unanimously agreed to be out on dry tyres. Completely insane race. Alonso should have won. He really should have done. Alonso could so easily have won. He should have won. And he blew it. Him, his strategy, I don't know. I don't know. It could have been, you know, McLaren's strategist. I don't know. But Alonso finished in 13th and he should have won that. But Sebastian Vettel, definitely a deserved winner. Beating Ricardo by 0.8 seconds. So there you have it, Vettel, Ricardo, Hamilton, Stroll, Magnussen, Grosjean, Massa beat Kvyat from the end for 7th place, Raikkonen in ninth. so he made up a couple of places from when I last saw him, hang on, what happened there? Oh, Bottas had a drive through penalty and so did Hulkenberg. Oh, well, Hulkenberg's race had derailed because he, he, he had done the same mistake, he made the same mistake as Alonso anyway, so he wasn't going to achieve much, Bottas I can't speak for. In the Drivers' Championship, look, Roman Grosjean has just about removed back up into the top 10 positions. There you go, Grosjean is directly behind Kimi Raikkonen. So, there you go, Roman Grosjean still doing Has Proud. What about Magnussen? Magnussen, he's, well, he's overtaken Palmer. Palmer and Ericsson, the two, well, let's not say, but they're not doing that great. They're both on, well, okay, Palmer's on 6 points and Magnussen, no, Palmer's on 6 points and Ericsson is on 5. But Magnussen, he's on the same points total as Verline and Kvyat. And Pascal Verline has been phenomenal at certain points this season. Wasn't it the second race of the season, the Chinese Grand Prix? Verline did the same strategy as us and wiped the floor of us. So, you know, 18th isn't that good. But 16 points, I mean, he's only 12 off of Grosjean. He's only... Okay, well, the top two are running away of it, but he's only... How many points? He's only 42 points off of Daniel Ricciardo in third. Yeah, third down to 18th for pretty close in the Drivers' Championship. The top two are running away with it, and the bottom two... 
but the bottom two, let's not really talk about them. And the team's championship, and we have certainly solidified our 8th place in the team's championship. 44 points, we've now caught up to Tor Rosso. Williams, I suppose, but Williams are still quite far away, whereas Tor Rosso, they're only 9 points ahead of us. Renault on 24 points, a missed opportunity for Nico Hülkenberg, and Sauber on 21 points. Certainly though, the, the team's championship is a lot more open at the top end. Ferrari, they're 32 points ahead of Force India, but that's still relatively close. And Mercedes aren't too far behind. Red Bull, nah, Red Bull are a little way off. But still, certainly a team's championship. There's certainly all to play for, whether it be in the battle for the lead, the battle for fourth, or even just the battle not to finish in last. Well, anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, be sure to leave a like, comment down below, and next time it's the German Grand Prix in Munich. A circuit with very low tyre wear, but also very hard tyre compounds. Maybe that could open up the possibility for a one-stop strategy. Well, it's only a 17-lap race as well, so who knows? A one-stop race, maybe even if something insane happens, a no-stop race. Who knows? But anyway, anyway, guys, yes, I'll see you next time for the German Grand Prix in this Equal Cars Formula 1 Championship. So I'll see you then.